Hi, this is Jonathan with Nimblehost, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the Hijack stack from Nimblehost, created just for RapidWeaver and the Stacks plugin from Your Head Software. Hijacks does require the Stacks plugin from Your Head Software, so if you don't have that installed, visit the Your Head website and download the free demo. Hijacks can be used in a variety of different ways to create some very unique layouts. And it gets its name because it will hijack the links that you create, will retrieve the content that those links point to, and will then display that content onto the same page where Hijacks itself is located. The best way to understand how this works is to see some actual examples. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Here we have the Hijacks product page on the Nimblehost website. And you see that we have a number of links and some image thumbnails that are also links that we can click on. If we click on the YouTube icon, you'll see that a YouTube video is displayed. Likewise for a Vimeo video. And here we have just a regular image. This is a full web page, in this case, the Apple website. And this icon is for a specific section of a remote page, not the entire page itself. So to use hijacks, I'll switch over to RepWeaver. First thing you'll need to do is to actually install the stack itself. Once you've installed the stack, go ahead and restart RepWeaver, and then you'll be ready to add it to your pages. You'll see here that we have three different hijack stacks to choose from. This is the main stack, and this is the one that you'll need to add to every page. So to use hijacks, drag and drop it onto your stacks page. In this case, we've added it down here towards the bottom. And you'll see that it displays some quick start instructions, which you can hide in the settings area. This section here stays open for easy reference later when you're actually creating your links. In order to tell hijacks about the links that you want it to use, You'll first create your link just like you normally would. In this case, we have our image thumbnails. And we're using this button here to create the link. And you'll see that this is just a regular URL to a YouTube video. And we tell hijacks about this link by toggling the custom attributes pane here. And we're adding a class with a value of hijacks. And since this is a YouTube video, we add a space and then YouTube. And you can see this referenced here in this reference section here for YouTube videos. We have the class name of hijacks, a space, and then YouTube. We follow this pattern for other types of content as well. In this case here, with a Vimeo video, we've got a direct link to a Vimeo video here, and then we're adding a new class, which we can do with this round button. We specify the name as class, and in this case, we're adding a class of hijacks, space, and then Vimeo to tell hijacks that this is a Vimeo video. Similarly, when we're adding a link to an image, we're creating a link, and in this case, we're pointing to a resource in our images folder here. And again, here, we're just adding a class of hijacks, and that's all we need in this case because this is just a regular image. When you want to pull in a remote web page, like the Apple website that I just showed you, you're creating your regular link to a full web page, and in this case, we're adding a class called hijacks space web page. And likewise, when you want to point to a specific section of a website, in this case, we're pointing to a test project that I've made. And you'll notice here that we have the link to the entire page itself, and then a space right here, and then the ID of the specific section on the page that contains the content that you want displayed. Let's go ahead and view that test project so you can see what I'm talking about in more detail. So I have the test project file here for hijacks on this page and the remote content that I just showed you is that page is hidden in the menu um, but it's can be accessed here, remote content, content, index.html. And you'll see here that 
we have a you know the specific content on a remote page and this is the actual content that we are um, displaying that hijacks is actually retrieving not the entire web page itself but just this portion here where hijacks is retrieving just the text to be displayed on this page here where you can see it has been pulled in and displayed here below now in order to determine the ID of the container where this text is located you'll need to use the web developer tools in Safari or Chrome or Firefox um, in most cases you can highlight the text and you can you'll see an option here called inspect element or something similar and then something like this will pop up and it'll show you um, the code that you're looking at and you'll notice that when you you move your mouse over these different tags that different sections of the page will highlight so you can see here that I have my mouse highlighting here over this div of ID with an ID of text and how it um, is highlighted here on the page in blue so that tells us that this is the area that we want to uh, use in hijacks this is the the ID that we want to add to hijacks so that it knows to pull in the text here in this section that's why when we're creating our link in hijacks in rapid weaver when we're adding the link itself you'll see that we've got the link to the full web page itself we have a, t a space here and then this pound sign tells hijacks that it, the container holding the text that you want is an ID and then we actually tell it the ID itself in this case the ID is test so that's how you can use this uh, feature in hijacks to pull in only a specific section of content on a remote web page and I should mention that for this specific feature the web page itself does need to be on the same domain where hijacks is being used so if your website is called domain.com then whatever page that you're using also needs to be on that same domain domain.com slash test page or whatever and this is to prevent um, cross-site uh, scripting attacks um, it's a security feature imposed by all web browsers it's not something that hijacks um, limits you to itself so with the basics of hijacks covered let's go ahead and jump into a little bit more of what you can do you'll notice here that we have the hijacks grid and the hijacks blocks stacks located here and a separate section of the page now these two stacks are designed specifically for when you want to hide and then display content on the same page where hijacks is already located so again we have our links here with each image thumbnails that all point to another page or another piece of content somewhere else on the web out there somewhere but you'll notice that here we have the content that is actually on the same page itself and you'll notice that although it's visible here in stacks if we preview this in Rapweaver or actually visit the site itself you notice that it's not being displayed so when you use the hijacks grid and the hijacks block stack these this content will be hidden by default and you can then um, use links to display that content so in this case we've got a remote content link if we click on that it displays the link here the text that you'll notice matches exactly what we have here for the remote content and likewise for if we click the inline content link it points to the inline content text that we've created here in Rapid Weaver, just like so now to use this feature um, you'll first need to add a hijacks grid stack to the page and then you can add multiple hijacks block stack inside of the grid stack once you've done that you do need to give each hijacks block a unique ID and this is so that when you're creating a link it has a specific name that you can use that will tell hijacks okay this link is pointing to this content and this is what I want to display and you can specify this unique link ID in the stack settings here and you'll notice if we remove this that we get a red error saying to please enter a unique link ID in stack settings 
This is required if you want to use this specific feature of Hijax. So now you've seen that you can add some on the page content for Hijax to display for you. Let's dig into this just a little bit deeper. The actual test page that I've been showing you here for Hijax, you'll note that we have, this is the main page, and we've got a number of icons here. And when we click on each icon, you'll notice that we've got some content here being displayed. And clicking on the icons just shows us more of this content on the same page. Likewise, you notice how we have got sections of content here below each row of icons and how you can seamlessly switch between them without any uh, confusion about having two sections or more open at the same time. You can see how this is done here in this example project. You'll see that we've got a, a row of icons here. This is a three column standard stack and we've added some thumbnail icons and just created links like I've shown you before. You'll notice here that we are pointing to test one which can be seen here this hijacks block section that has a unique ID of test one. And we follow this same pattern for the other image thumbnails. Here we have a link pointing to test two which you can see is a separate hijacks block. And likewise for this third thumbnail which is a link pointing to test three, like so, which again is located in this single Hijax grid container down here, test three. And you do see these notes here that you don't want to place a Hijax block inside of another Hijax block. So just be careful of that when you're adding your stacks to the page that you're not inadvertently nesting them inside one another. And so again, we just followed the same pattern. We've got uh, one hijax grid with three hijax blocks inside of them. And inside of each hijax block is just a standard three column stack with some regular texts and just an image. And I've moved the image into different columns so that you can see that uh, we're actually loading each specific section of content. And again, we followed the same pattern here with a second hijax grid and uh, we've got um, again another row of icons here um, that points to test four as you can see here and then likewise for the other links so that's how you can add uh, content on the page where hijacks is located and that content will initially be hidden and then will be revealed by hijacks um, when you've specified uh, specific uh, links. Again, uh, I should probably point out here that uh, in addition to just pointing out the specific ID, we do have to add that class of hijacks, and in this case um, we add a space and inline. And again, this is specified in the hijacks quick reference section here. You'll notice we've got one here for hijacks inline for when you want to point a link to on-page content. So again, we're creating a link um, and we're pointing it to this case an ID of test1 or test2 or whatever and we're adding a class and that class is hijacks space and inline and again you use this inline uh, setting whenever you're referencing or whenever you're pointing a link to content on this same page here where hijacks is located so as you can see this will give you um, a good feel for the different types of layouts that you can create. You could have a row of uh, um, product information or whatever the case may be where each link can uh, reveal a little bit more information about what it is that your visitors are taking a look at. And you can do things like customize this link and the back link. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, this is done in the Hijax main stack here. You can change this content to say um, return or you could use a different language entirely and uh, that will be displayed here so that customers have an, or visitors rather have a easy way to go back um, and hide all the content um, in case they get overwhelmed with everything that they're taking a look at. So I hope that gives you a uh, good sense for all the different things that you can do with a hijack stack from Nimblehost. If you have any questions or concerns please let us know. Thanks.